You good? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so, I'm going to tell you about a book that I haven't finished yet, um, but when I publish this video, uh, I plan on publishing it the day that the book comes out. Uh, I got, it sounds really pretentious, but I have an advanced <laughs> copy. Ooh. I know. I got it from England. How fancy. Because you at, at this moment, you can't buy it in America, so I feel pretty good about that. You're so proud. I know. It's ridiculous. <laughs> um, so this is, it's called, it's a great title, Ducks Newberry Port by Lucy Elman. And this is a monster. This is a hefty thing. Is she an English author? Uh, British. Okay. I'm not sure, but I'll say British. Sure. Um, and it's it's like getting lots of accolades. It's um, I, I think I heard about it because it was um, long listed on the land long listed for the Man Booker Prize. Mm -hmm. um, and you know that that thing comes out, and they got however many books, which I, I kind of like because you can look around, and there were a lot of things that really kind of struck a chord with me. So for this big, beefy, baggy mess, it's like maybe, it's over a thousand pages long. The meat of the book is like, I don't know, eight sentences. That's wild. Something like that. So th there's like these little interludes but um, most of it is a sentence that's going to be hundreds of pages long. Uh, and that's the kind of thing that just goes like right up my alley. Like, not knowing a thing about it, just going like, I love it when people try new things. Yeah, it's weird. Um, yeah, it sounds, yeah, check it out. It sounds yeah. absurd and crazy. Like... My first thought is like writing a sentence that's hundreds of pages long, and you're there writing it, writing it, and on and on and on, and you go, and period. <laughs> How do you even maintain yeah. the structure of a sentence that long? So, I'll say that it's a novelty, it isn't, but just to kind of get through a point, um, it's obviously not written as one perfectly grammatical sentence. Couldn't be, sure. Um, instead, it has like this um, kind of like this mantra and this rhythm um, where she'll go, the fact that, and then say something, the fact that, and say something. And I think that she pulls it off to magnificent effect. Cool. But it's a book that could also have been broken down into a bullet point list hmm. and just have a list or chop it up and put periods wherever you want them. Um, so I'll tell you about my experience of the book and why I think the way that she wrote it um, adds so much. Um, this is one of the, maybe, maybe the first book that I've come across that reminded me of actually being on my phone, mindlessly going through apps, um, like at, at present, um, we have that never ending scroll feature. On social media. Yeah. Yeah. And the way that the, the, the things that she's talking about, it's, 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 um, I should say it's set in kind of like modern day, um, the main character is a, a housewife in Ohio, I think. Um, she's like baking pies, but she's like on the internet and watching TV and listening to the radio and talking about all the things that are going on in the world, the things that she's thinking about, um, you know, questioning like materialism, materialism and consumerism and uh, how how genuine are her own thoughts, how manipulated has she been from the things that, um, the screens that she has in her face. Yep. Um, and 
it's stream of consciousness. There's a lot of um, like word association, um, and it's one of the more successful books that really make you feel like this is someone kind of jumping from thought to thought, while also keeping it uh, readable. Um, it's tremendously readable. Like for me, it's addictive. Like I just keep. And cool. it reminds me of like, like sitting there jumping between different apps, seeing totally different topics popping up all. And you know, if you're on Facebook and you're scrolling, you're like, oh, the Amazon is on fire. Oh, someone lost their dog. Oh, someone just had a baby. Someone just got married. Somebody took a selfie, and you're able to process all of these different things. It's not right. jarring, like in that context. Whereas, like, if somebody told you that they wrote a book, and the main character was a scatterbrain, that's just gonna spit out all these different things, you would go like, "Well, how do you follow it?" Yeah. And the interesting thing is, like, at the moment we're <clears throat> already trained ourselves to be able to absorb a lot of information disparate from each other. And constantly. Constantly, yeah. yeah. And this book is just so constant. The thing is like a charging train. Like It's cool. The thing just does not end. It's walls of... I don't know, I yeah, can't. pull it up a bit. Yeah. That's what the whole entire book looks like. Wow. And it, it just goes on and on and on. And it's like... But engaging. This, yeah. Yeah. Really engaging. Um, and there's no... I'm not finished it. I, did I say that? Yeah. I haven't... Yeah. Um, I've actually kind of just... I don't know. A couple, maybe 100 pages in. And I, I feel like there's... Like this woman definitely has her calisthenics. Cool. Like there's no signs of slowing down. Um, so... The other thing that I was thinking about as I was reading it, because she's talking about all the things that are happening basically right now in the past couple of years, um, it's like if I read like a book by like Anthony Trollope, okay. um, he, 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 Anthony Trollope has a book called, um, he, he was like a contemporary of like Dickens hmm. around that time period. He has a book called like The Way We Live Now. And you can see it in Dickens, all the Anthony Trollope novels, maybe even like Sherlock Holmes, where you're reading this like period piece, and you're like, wow, like what an amazing world they live in. They all have whatever, like carriages, and they wear these hats, and Petticoats. With all their coats, and yeah. canes, and this and that. And like you really get interested in the world. Um, and this is like, a, I don't even, I can't think of another book where. As I was reading it, it really gives the sense of the world that we live in now. And I will go even farther to say, further to say, a hundred years from now, I can imagine someone reading this book and going, what a world they lived in. Huh. Cool. It has like that same sense. Um, I, I, love, I love that it feels like there's technology involved. Like, this thing is so exhaustive. I don't, I don't even know anything about the woman, really, or how she wrote it, but I'm pretty confident to say that she couldn't have written this thing about Google. Um, and there's comparables. So, um, if you look at, like, uh, Vin, uh, Victor Hugo, with his Les Miserables, and um, Toilers of the Sea, even... Hunchback, the Hunchback book. Um, that was around the time of the Gutenberg Press, mm. where all of a sudden books were more readily available, which meant that authors had more uh, access to information. And it changed the way that <coughs> those books were written. Yeah. All of a sudden, he could stuff all this information in that was a brand new thing then. And this is a book that's like such a great example of utilizing the technology that we have now. 
It paints a better picture of the times as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Um, what else do I want to say? <clears throat> so on the cover, I thought this is hilarious. So on the cover, uh, Cosmopolitan, which is, uh, I guess, like a magazine. It's certainly a magazine. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so Cosmopolitan said, Ulysses has nothing on this. Oh, cool. So Ulysses was written by James Joyce. Here's the thing. Uh, so this is Lucy Elman. Richard Elman is her father. Huh. So Richard Elman is uh, like one of the most acclaimed bi- biographers of the 20th century. And uh, he wrote a handful of these masterful exhaustive biographies of Irish writers. There's a biography on Yeats. There's a biography on Oscar Wilde. And he has the definitive biography of James Joyce. Oh, really? So her father was one of the most eminent scholars of James Joyce literature. He's one of the guys... Like, if, if you read um, the James Joyce biography... He's constantly quoting Finnegan's Wake. And when, when you read it, it's not that it'll necessarily make sense, but he explains it to you in a way that at least you know that it made sense to Richard Elman, which also lets you know that it can make sense to somebody. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I did a book review of Finnegan's Wake and basically said it's incomprehensible. Right. Um, not to Richard Elman. So, I mean, it's sort of just like a funny anecdote. Like, Yeah, that's cool. Um, her father was Richard Elman. Um, I guess maybe it was, yeah, it's pretty good. Or yeah. Do you have any questions? Or No, it sounds like you rec- recommend it. Because you're going to put this out when it's available. Uh, it seems like a yeah, n- new mean, kind of book people should support. This is, the, like... I haven't finished it yet, but I, I guess... To give an idea of my enthusiasm so far, to me, this is going to be one of those landmark books that people talk about um, and brag about in the sense that, like, Ulysses is a great example. That's a book that, if you read it, that's like a notch on your bedpost. I don't know if that's the best way to put it. Yeah. Is that? I don't know. It's a notch on something. Yeah. <laughs> You really like books. <laughs> yeah, I love them. <laughs> uh, but there's no, like but a, other ones like... Um, yeah, I know what you mean. Like Remembrance of Things Past, um, uh, uh, Gravity's Rainbow by Thomas Pynchon. That's that's one of those books uh, recently. Like, um, what's that book by uh, David Foster Wallace? Infinite Jest. Okay. Uh, and it, it fits in so well. Like, you know, when it says, like, Ulysses has nothing on this, like, to me, it's almost like, if you didn't read Ulysses, here's a book that you're really not going to read. Okay. You know? And this is going to be the kind of book I, that people will have pretended to read. The way that people will get Infinite Jest and go, I'm going to crack this thing open. Have you ever seen Infinite Jest? The no. Book? It's the same kind of like tome. Sure. Um, you get into it and you're like, oh dear God. <laughs> um, one thing I'll say is like, as far as those books go, like um, any of them, Ulysses, Gravity Rainbow, um, this is such a pleasure to read. And I, I, I haven't stumbled once for as weird as it, as it is as far as like just having one long sentence and all that. Andy. Mm-hmm. Um, Andy. Terrifically readable. No no confusion, no issues, um, no exhaustion or frustration. Um, awesome. I guess I'll just kind of wind it up. Um, so, anything else? I think we're kind of good. Yeah, I think okay. that was great. Um, so, leave a comment if you would like. Um, and uh, thank you for watching.